Hi guys, welcome back to another video at Trader's Journey. Today I wanted to dis I wanted to actually show you guys a full walkthrough of Tastyworks and give you guys a full tutorial on how to use it when trading options. Now I have reviewed um, some of these tutorials and walkthroughs across YouTube and over the internet. I, I don't feel they're that useful for um, most of the audience. So I thought I'd create one myself to hopefully help you guys in uh, managing the process and um, help you help you just look at all the different tools which are available on Tastyworks and just walk you through that and see if I can add some value and help you guys out if you're new to Tastyworks. Now, um, just before I do get into that, just, just to explain, um, just some background, a background of Tastyworks as, as a platform and the founders of Tastyworks. Now, I have mentioned in my previous videos that the founders of Tastyworks have been involved in so many previous trading platforms, um, some successful, some not so successful. So the, the founders of Tastyworks have come with um, so much knowledge and, and experience of, of trading in general, and they've managed to create something which I feel is extremely user friendly and easy to use and especially good for, for options traders. Now, um, you can see here, this is the, as soon as you sign into the platform, this is the screen that you're presented with. Now, um, Tastyworks is available as a mobile version. Um, you've got a desktop version and you've actually got a version which you can sign in through a um, internet um, sort of application such as Google Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer. So there is about two or three options you have in order to trade using Tastyworks. I myself um, use a combination of the desktop platform um, application and the mobile application. Um, the mobile application is pretty easy to use as well, but um, I'll be talking you through the the actual desktop platform today. Um, if anyone wants to see the mobile version, just uh, let me know in the comment section below and I'll, I'll hopefully be able to produce that as well and walk you through that that application for mobile phones for Android as well as iPhone. They are they are they both work in the same way. So um, I'll try and create one if anyone is interested in that. So yeah, I guess let's get straight into this. Um, if anyone does use another platform, let let me know in the comment section below. Um, and if you guys need any other tutorials, this is my main. Um, platform which I use to do my daily options trading and I think it's fantastic and um, I would highly highly recommend this. One of the biggest advantages of using Tastyworks in my opinion is that it is very quick in filling orders so if you're using any other platform and are having issues with um, with it crashing or with with slow fill times um, with opening orders and, and, and things like that. I think Tastyworks is fantastic for that. So especially for beginners, I think Tastyworks is one of the best platforms to start on. So let's get straight into this guys. Sorry for delaying the introduction. So um, as you can see here, let's start on the left. You'll have, you'll see there's a, there's, you can create lists and watch lists. I think this is particularly useful for beginners who trade small cap stocks or trade certain types of stocks. You can create your own watch list and move between each of them. So just as an example, if you were to click on your presets, there are presets which people have created. Um, I tend not to use that because they're very specific to certain types of traders. So I've created a new list. If you click on new list, this is my list which has come up, which these are the stocks I generally trade. Um, some of them aren't actually on there because I haven't amended it. But um, what you can do is you can towards the bottom of this left screen, you can click add symbol. So you can type in any symbol as you wish, for instance, Apple, and you can click on that stock and then you can click the plus sign here and it adds it to your watch list. I think it's fantastic and easy to access all the stocks in which you usually trade. You can add as many of these as you want. Um, but as you've probably, if anyone's familiar with my previous videos, I try and condense it to only a few stocks which I trade regularly. Um, so yeah, further further on the left here, you can see on the bottom far left, it shows it shows the time and the date, um, which is which is useful if anyone's trying to track opening and closing times of the market, which is great. Um, you've got market red quotes green connected, so I think it's important to just make sure you are connected. If you're having Wi-Fi issues, it's good to look there towards the bottom left just to make sure you are connected to the platform and everything's working as it should. 
So I think it's really great to have, as I said, your watch list there and, and it's good to create your own watch list and um, put all the stocks which you regularly trade into that watch list. And, and you can create as many watch lists as you want. There's no, there's no sort of um, restriction to that. Um, one of the things that I find useful is sometimes I've only, on a particular day, I've only sort of um, traded a couple of or three or four stocks and you just want to see the positions which you've opened. You can simply click positions here and it will show you the change, the, the change in the stock price or contract price rather, and it will just break down the list of the options in which you or the positions in which you've opened and that haven't as closed as yet, which I think is really good. Um, another thing here is you can actually see recent symbols which you've traded. Everything is very user friendly here for um, just checking the stocks and checking the prices. So that is what I keep on the far left and that is the default position of Tastyworks is on the far left you'll have your watch list. Now moving on towards the middle of the platform um, you will see at the top you can have here it says spy I've actually searched spy there you can search any stock you wish using this search field here for instance if I wanted to search Apple I can click that and click that and there we go it will come up with a stock it will show you towards the top the IV rank the last um, size of an order the change in the price of that uh, particular contract show you the, the bid price and the ask price and volume going through I don't tend to look so much at these these figures here um, I'll go into further detail as to what exactly I look at. So when you've searched a particular stock you're wishing, to, you're hoping to trade, you can search it there and you can, if you wanted to open a trade for instance, you can click on the trade tab here on the left and what you'll be presented with is this. Now this is the curve, um, this is the, the way of looking at a contract price using a curve. Um, but I tend to always use the table. I think it's a matter of preference, whatever you can. Some, some people like to trade visually and like to see that um, visually on a curve, which, which is completely fine. But I myself, I, I like the, the table version and um, I think it's really easy to, to look through all the contracts and all the different dates and it's very easy to go through. But you get, you get presented with so many different ways of looking at um, different trading positions and I think as you go through throughout the tabs it just creates more it gets more complex and I think if you aren't, aren't used to this platform and you're a beginner um, which this tutorial is for I would highly recommend just sticking to the table this is the easiest and most effective way in trading and it's it doesn't take long to get used to it so I would recommend using the table trade mode um, so for instance if you were trading Apple and you were looking at an, a contract expiration date of September 11th you can simply click on September 11th and you will be presented with all the different contracts you could purchase by strike price. So right down the middle guys it is the strike price and um, right now Apple is trading at around 120 US dollars so you can go, through, go down this strike price list and you can pick different contracts you are wishing to trade. Now I think this is really a really easy way to, to just pick a contract you want to buy and um, what's useful is on your left you'll have all your call contracts and on your right you'll have all your put contracts it's, it's labeled that on the top of the actual um, drop down so you can see here calls and you can see here is put so if you want to place a, a contract purchase for puts you would go to the right if you want to place an order for a call contract you would stick to the left. So um, what's also useful to know is at the top you can see volume, delta, bid and ask. Now this is what I have specifically um, sort of programmed my settings to show as this but you can actually change that and, and actually put any sort of different indicators you wish to see on there such as gamma, um, vega, any sort of in indicator volume, um, implied volatility, you can actually pick what you would like to see. So the, in order to change that you would need to go to here to the top right if you can see there's a settings icon you click on settings and you can change the way it is displayed and um, what you would simply do is you would go to, to options, um, sorry no, you would go to trade and you click on display, Let me just find it's one of these.
here it is so you go on positions and sorry no this is actually something else sorry about that guys let me just see where that would show ah apologies guys so if you would like to change the column headings to provide you with different information you would simply click on the actual header of the column so for instance volume if you want to see something different like implied volatility volatility you simply click on that so you can change and alter these as much as you want to make it useful for you to place the most effective trades you can change delta to theta you could change theta to gamma you can change it to exactly what you would like to see um, which influences most of your trades. So I think this is really useful, especially for any beginning beginners out there. You don't want to see so many indicators when placing your trades. You just want to stick to the main ones which you look at. And for me, that is that is um, volume and that is delta. Um, I will go through in a separate tutorial exactly what all of these are if anyone's interested in that. So. Don't be, don't be afraid to ask if anyone's confused on exactly what any of these indicators mean. I'll create a separate video on that for you guys to hopefully help you in understanding what they mean. So moving on guys, you will have your bid and ask price. I always keep those as they are. I don't even think you can change those. They will always remain constant. You can only change these two columns. So I mean, generally when placing an order, for instance, if I wanted to play a call contract for the strike price of 121.25 I would simply click on ask now that is extremely key when placing an order you would always when you're looking to buy a contract you would always click on ask um, so generally I would always click on ask and I generally go straight down the middle when purchasing contracts so in terms of the difference between the bid price and the ask price I would usually click down and I'd be straight right in the middle between the bid and the ask price. Generally, generally that's what I do. And that order type is classed as a limit order type, which you can see here on the bottom right. You have different types of orders which you can place, such as a market order, a stop market, a stop limit. Generally, when I'm day trading and um, placing my orders, I always stick to a limit order. When you select a market order, that is something I would I would mostly recommend people to stay away from the only times when I would use a market order here on the bottom is when I am chasing if a price is looking to make a, a huge move and it's moving fairly quickly sometimes the only time only way to catch it is by placing a market order and that's how your orders get filled quickly um, so generally I, I stick away I stay away from market orders but that is the only instance when I would use a market order is when the price is running quickly and you're looking to catch it um, in all other scenarios, I will be using a limit order and I will select the price of the contract between, it would be exactly the mid price between the bid and the ask price. So I hope, I hope that guy, I hope that helps you guys out. Other, other things, once you've selected a contract and clicked on the ask price, you can amend the quantity of contracts you want to buy by using this left icon and the right icon here on quantity. Um, and you can actually amend the strike price here. Generally, I wouldn't even bother with this. If I'm looking to place a different contract, I would just click clear, click clear and click on another contract price with a different strike price. So um, very easy and very, I, ho I hope that makes sense to most of you guys. If any, any of you got questions on this specific um, part, just feel free to leave that in the comments section below. Um, once you've selected your contract price and the correct strike price and a correct price of the contracts in which you want to place your order, you will just review quickly everything across here, the order in which you're buying, um, the limit order and, and everything else, and you would simply click review and send. Now, once you click review and send, you're, you're, it, won't, it won't complete the order straight away. You will now be presented with a confirmation screen. As, as so so once you get this screen you can just quickly review everything which you're doing and the order in which you're you're purchasing contract in which you're purchasing you can go over the um, actual option contract you're looking to buy you can go over the price the trade cost and just remember guys if anyone's new and um, new to trading your trade price will always be 10 times what you see on the initial screen and the reason for that is every contract is worth 100 shares so you would simply times that by 100 
and that's how you get to 305. So you, as you can remember, the ask price was three 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 dollars ten ten cents. You would times up by ten, and that's how you get to your three hundred and five dollars. Once you select send order, um, it will simply it you will get a screen that pops up and says order is working. Now, if the order gets filled straight away, you will get a working screen followed by a filled screen. Now, in order to see that. If, if at this point you're not happy with the order, you can simply click clear order here at the bottom left. If you want to change anything, you can click edit order. Um, so we're going to click clear order to get out of this. Now, if you want to see a order working and you want to see if it's been filled or not, you can click on positions just above the trade tab. You click on positions and you will see the icon of the stock you're trading come up. And as you click on the actual stock you can see you'll see you'll be able to see an order here and it will say working in large letters um, if the order has, order has already been filled it will show like so it will show like so um, which is which is which is great but like I said Tastyworks is one of the fastest fill times I've ever experienced so you will more more often than not you will you won't even see the working tab you'll just see a filled order um, so which is great so I mean as a beginner, these are the two sort of screens you want to be looking at. This table trade screen where you're placing your orders and managing your positions. So I hope that makes sense to, to most of you guys. Now just going into, um, say you've placed an order and now you're happy with the profit percentage, you're happy with the profit you've made and you're wishing to close the order. What you would simply do is click on click on the, the stock in which you're looking to close. You would right click and you can click close position once you click close position it will flick you back to this tray tab and it will have the screen in which we we had when we were purchasing the order but in this case we're selling the contract so you would just simply simply click review fill and review like we did when purchasing the order and it will go off and sell the contract um, if for instance what I usually do when I'm day trading this is very good for risk management and anyone looking to manage their risk which I would um, recommend every trader does. If you are managing your risk, you can actually have a a close, an auto close um, position. So, for instance, you could send off if you are happy with 50% profit or close position. If you are like um, so 20%, you could. If you are happy with a 20% profit, you can automatically set it to close the order once it hits that profit. So I think that's excellent and I think it's great to 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 use that to manage risk. Um, once it hits a profit percentage, you're happy with just it will automatically sell the order. Now, a lot of people are probably asking, well, how do you manage the risk side in terms of losing money? Um, so what you can do is when you're placing an order, for instance, let's go back to placing a trade, for instance, with Facebook. So if you wanted to place a 285 call contract, you click on the ask like we covered previously you go through to the mid now instead of clicking a limit order you would click a stop limit so the limit price is what you would um, generally be happy to or whatever's aligned with your risk management so once it hits that stop it will hit your it will sell your order so I think that's very useful to have so if anyone's new and afraid of losing money and wants to stick to their risk management then it helps to set a different type of order type, which is a stop limit. But what I would say guys as well, I mean, always stick generally what I did and I wouldn't really recommend this, but what I have done myself is set a mental loss. Now, the way you manage that is if you cl clicked on your positions tab again, I have set my settings to show a PL open percentage. So as soon as this drops to 10% or whatever your risk management is, you could click you could you could know if it's say for instance your your um, risk strategy is to lose only 10% of your account once this hits 10% you can manage your risk just from looking at your positions and constantly um, just keeping up to date with what your positions are and whether you're um, above the percentage of your risk strategy I guess once it hits it you can then click it 
and close your position if it's hit your mental stop loss. Most traders I know do that, um, and I think it's I think I think it's also a good way. But as long as you're strict with yourself and you're managing your risk side, is great. And I think, like I said, from a profit point of view, you can set your close profit percentage. Once it hits that that percentage, it will automatically go off to sell the order, which I think is absolutely great and a very easy way to, to trade. Now, one thing on the positions tab, which we're looking at here, which is really useful, is um, I have set my settings to show P&L for the day, P&L percentage, um, and IV rank and, and, and dividend dates, etc. What you can do is if you were to click on the settings icon to the far right, you can manage and change your displayed position settings here. So you can show see that I've got PL day displayed, PL change, days to expiration of my contract, IV rank, X dividend date, PL date with percentage bar. I think it's great. This this I try and keep it as simple as possible so it doesn't overcomplicate things, but feel free to add as many of these as you want to your positions tab just so you can manage your risk and manage your profit percentages. Um, and in this sort of settings settings page, you can you can alter so many things, your position detail, your header detail, so many things that you can change on this platform to suit you best. Um, I think that's great. So there's so many other things you can you can alter here, but I tend to try and keep it as simple as possible, especially for beginners. You don't want to be overcomplicating things um, as as much. Now, if you have got potentially, say you're trading um, smaller cap stocks, but you're you're looking to buy um, generally trade more than one quantity of contracts, you can amend the default position to, to as many as you want. I keep it as one because I generally trade one contract per, per trade. But if you uh, obviously have more capital and you're looking to buy more contracts or whatever it might be, you can change your default position here. So I hope that makes sense. But guys, this is the very, this is, this is as the, the most you need in order to use Tasteworks. It's some people make it over complicated and over complex, but I think this is, this is the bare minimum and you don't need more than this to begin trading with Tastyworks. Um, as you've noticed guys from my previous videos on charting, um, charting is just as important as using the platform and even more so important than using the platform. The platform I would say is the most easy, easiest part of trading. Um, technical analysis, charting and using your indicators and using all the different resources available to you to make good trades. That is the more difficult part of trading. Psychology and risk management is also a very important part of trading. So the platform, as soon as it's, it took, it takes about a week to two weeks to get used to this platform. It's very, very easy to use. Um, the Tastyworks team at their help desk are extremely helpful. So if you guys have any questions as well um, that maybe I can't answer or maybe I can't help with, the Tastyworks um, help desk are extremely helpful. And um, I know I know there's been issues with the Thinkorswim platform recently, where it's, they, a lot of users have been complaining about the, the platform crashing and I know Tastyworks are getting a huge influx of users. So this is going to slow down, slow down the sort of application process. But for me, when I applied at Tastyworks, it was it was less than a week and the account got approved and I funded it and it was it was excellent. So the, one of the other tabs I just wanted to, to mention before we close up here, guys, is the activity tab. I generally don't look at it unless I'm filling in my trading journal. Um, it will show you all the trades you've placed and I think it's extremely useful just to journal all your trades and and understand what um, what your what how, how well you performed in the day or weeks or months so extremely important to use the activity tab if you're using it to fill in your trading journal um, some of the other things guys towards the top I have obviously for obvious reasons blocked it out but you will have your account at the top the balance of net liquidity PL um, and how much BP you've got left to trade in the day, today's trades, the trade day trade counter, and and you can also um, see that across the top. And I think I think that's 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 useful to see as well because sometimes you want to know how well you're performing in the day. Have you reached your profit target? Um, have you hit a, a loss target that you should stop trading with? So that's all useful to see towards the top. Um, I must admit, guys, all the other things which you see here. Um, 
for instance. I don't I, I don't use the chart at all on Tastyworks. That is probably one criticism or the only criticism I have of Tastyworks is the charting system. Uh, when you compare it to the likes of Thinkorswim, um, TOS and all the other platforms, I think their charting is much more accessible and a lot more user friendly and a lot more helpful to, to place trades. So I think the charting on Tastyworks isn't as great, so which is why I don't use it. Um, so feel free to use it. I think if, if, if you haven't got any other choice, then maybe it is a good option for you. But for me with charting, I stick to trading view and I've done a full tutorial of how I chart on my previous videos. Um, so yeah, that's that. And then all the other icons here, history, follow, um, I think following is quite useful, but I tend to stick, stay away from it um, because it takes you away from your own trading strategy and you tend to maybe make mistakes and, and follow people too too closely. Um, but I think it's useful to see the founders of Tastyworks and how they trade and what trades they've made. Um, it's pretty cool to see that as well. So you can follow people on here um, and, and see how they trade. So I think that's pretty cool. There's only obviously a small group of them, but uh, most of them are the founders and uh, creators of Tastyworks and influential people who use the platform. Um, so, I mean, this is really it guys. This is, this is, this sums up what Tastyworks is a really good platform. And as you can tell, there's no, nothing complex about it. I think if you want to make more use of it and look into trying using the curve, just mess around with it, um, see what works best for you. And if you've got any questions, leave that in the comment section below and I will be happy to get back to every single one of you. Um, but I think it's one of the most user friendly platforms out there. And if anyone has any specific questions of the platform, feel free to ask myself or even reach out to the Tastyworks help desk team. Um, I do know they have some incentives of opening accounts. So um, definitely check in with their website. Uh, and that can be, that is really useful. If you want to get the application for your phone, just check on the, your app store. Um, on the iPhone or the Google App Store and you will see Tastyworks is available on both of those um, those those mobile devices so they will be extremely helpful to use. If anyone wants to see a tutorial of that feel free to let me know in the comment section below and I will do my best to create that tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you are new to this channel or um, you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. Follow me on my Instagram, which is traderjourney underscore official. Um, and I will be uploading some information there to help you guys in your trading journey. If anyone requires any specific tutorials or any help with options trading, again, please leave it in the comment section below and I will look to make a video or a tutorial on that as soon as possible. So thanks very much for watching today, guys. I will catch you all on the next video. Thanks very much. Take care. Goodbye.